Alright, this is for the Flexican who apparently thinks that I'm uh, uh, unable to talk about these things that might reflect negatively on George. Let me make something clear. Uh, even if George is guilty in some sense of doing something, this and that, or whatever it may be, whatever, or if he goes to trial and he's found guilty that way too, it doesn't matter. Uh, it changes nothing of what I've said these past, what, two and a half months now, or whatever, how long it's been going on probably three months here pretty soon it changes nothing about that so but let's bring up and I'll talk about the uh, bond stuff later for a longer audio video for uh, I forget his name right now but that we'll get to that later all right so the question this question came up before this question came up a long time ago because we knew at least whereabouts where Trayvon Martin's body was and I, so I suppose now that more evidence came out it's worth going over again and so the question is then, it's real simple, okay? If George was in fact punched by Trayvon about where George's keys are located, which sent George to the ground and then Trayvon got on top of him, then how is it Trayvon's body ends up approximately 35 feet away, 11 meters? Right, so what do we have on that, right? Well we have there's only two uh, reports that I'm aware of that were from leaked sources of investigators or somebody close to the case all right there's only two sources we have on that right that I'm that I'm aware of two articles and this one is from the Orlando Sentinel and they say that in George's versions of events he had turned around and wa was walking back to his SUV when Trayvon approached him from behind. Now, I mean, that's vague, right? I mean, it doesn't tell us where that happened. Uh, the two exchanged words, and then Trayvon punched him in the nose, again, sending him to the ground and begins beating him. I'll leave you a link for that. The other source was from the Daily Beast here. Zimmerman told police officials that he lost sight of Trayvon Martin and went around a townhouse to see where he was. Then he claimed Martin confronted him, punched him, knocking him down. Well, again, we, it's vague. I mean, went around the townhouse to see where he was. Now, I have my opinions and it seems to be somewhat of a consensus of where that is, where that he went around that townhouse where that T is. But we don't know that for certain, do we? And we don't know. Alright, but so it's still vague. We don't know. We don't know like where this happened, right? Then he claimed Martin confronted and punched him, knocking him down. And then when he was on the ground, Martin straddled him, striking him, and then tried to smother him. Now if I'm correct in this this sounds like a really good source they have because if I'm not mistaken right this was on the 19th I believe the uh, bond hearing was on the 20th and I think this is the first ever mention of uh, any type of smother and then that was brought up the next day at the bond hearing so that sounds to me then if that's correct if I'm correct in my thinking there then it sounds to me like a really good source that they have but the problem is when reading these articles it's difficult to tell what exactly the source told them and exactly what the editor is telling us right it's it's difficult to say so in his version of events Zimmerman had turned around and was walking back to his SUV uh, when Trayvon approached him from behind is is that is that the uh, source actually saying that or what all right so you have to be careful how you read these things regardless neither of those two reports really give us any idea of where George is but they have in common the fact uh, of what's being stated here that George gets punched goes down to the ground Trayvon gets on top of him and starts beating him there right well if that's true again we go back to the question if that happened by the keys then how do they get 35 feet away and he's on top of him it's hard to imagine that they scooted down that doesn't seem to make sense 
Is it possible that they can roll that far? Well, I suppose that's possible. It seems, even if we just say 30 feet, uh, I suppose that's possible, but it doesn't, you know. All right, so what else? All right, so the only other thing we have other than that is a, a Frank, that Frank Taffy fella, Taff or whatever that nice name is. He shows in a video here, I'll leave you a link to, of uh, pointing to the spot where the keys are. I guess I should be showing you where the keys are, right? Let's, I mean, I have other videos on this, but let's go to where the keys are. All right. Going on in. Alright. Okay, all my labels are missing. There we go. Uh, I have the... Also added the, the direction of the body. Remember, it was turned over at one point. His feet are over in this general direction and his head this way. So he's like that. Alright, so let's go where the key... Let's back out a little bit here. Okay, so yeah, his keys are about like. Well, let's bring in our thing here. We can look. Even the keys alone is still a bit away from the T, right? About eight feet or so. And then from the keys. So if, the, like I said, the story starts here, right? Apparently. And then the the body, it's not perfect, but I mean, there's the the fence and we know he's just beyond that fence there so yeah about 35 feet or so 34 feet 10 meters 11 almost 12 yards but if Trayvon's on top of him over here well then how do they get over there that's the big question So him and and, and uh, Piero were also talking about, well, if you look at this from you know, the God's eye view here, you can see that it's, it's starting here and it's going in this general direction. First the keys, then the bag, and we should be more like this, really. First the keys, then the 7-Eleven bag. Then what do we get next? Going south. Get George's flashlight that's like in here and well then Trayvon's cell phone is over here past where the body is anyways the idea being that it's obviously moving southward like that uh, so you just draw the conclusions you will <laughs> from that uh, they were asking about this white Walmart bag. I believe I read in the reports. I still haven't went back and looked yet. But the the white Walmart bag and this first aid kit. I, I believe. I don't remember them mentioning anything about the first aid kit. Except for an evidence list. Um, but I remember them mentioning about when the cop was given CPR. How he wanted something plastic. To put over uh, the bullet hole wound. As he was doing chest compressions. Things of that nature. So, that is, and then I also believe I read that they tested a bag with the blood on it. So, I believe that's the white Walmart bag. But why that's over here then instead of over there, I don't know. And the the tan bag, it doesn't say 7-Eleven on it. <laughs> so, yeah, technically we can't say that's the 7-Eleven bag. But it's that same tan looking bag from the 7-Eleven video that we see, so... <laughs> can assume there but the question about that is well Trayvon had it in the uh, had his watermelon cocktail in the uh, in the in the bag you know at some point he must have taken it out because the the watermelon cocktail was found in his front center center pocket of his hoodie so things of that nature but anyways I'm getting kind of caught up in the details here uh, more details than I need to be the question, though, the main question is, again, if George was, in fact, punched by Trayvon about where George's keys were or are lo were located, uh, which sent George, the story being sent George to the ground right then, and then Trayvon got on top of him right there, then how is it possible that his body ends up approximately 35 feet away? 
Uh, okay, yeah, so the Frank Taft story, he's the one that mentions that the fight started by those keys. George's father is the one who mentions that it start. what does he say, by the T or something. Get the impression by the T. But Frank Taft in this video actually points to the spot, and it looks like he points almost exactly where the keys are. Then there's a uh, talk left, I'll leave you with that. Evidence locations, video. Ah, uh, the wind blowing bag. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave you with the wind blowing bag. How, how bags blow around funny, even if the wind is blowing in some other direction. Uh, yeah, okay. Then Piero and the uh, Flexkin. Alright, that's it. Peace out, my brothers, sisters, everyone in between.